Tony Holman was a successful industrialist from Terre Haute, 65 miles west of Indianapolis on the Wabash River. His family business, Holman and Company, had made its initial fortune in the catalog business. But young Tony had expanded it dramatically by turning Clabber Girl baking powder into one of the nation's top sellers. He was an able businessman who'd been a shy star athlete at Yale, a leader in civic affairs who tended to avoid the limelight and personal attention. Most of all, he was a Hoosier through and through. Tony Holman came out and was very, very shy, had been to the track as a boy, and uh, thought that the 500 tradition could should continue on, and he thought Kentucky has the, uh, the derby, uh, Indiana should have the 500 mile race. So he went over and looked at the place, didn't seem to be that dismayed about its condition, and uh, he kept bringing friends in and said, what do you think? And they looked at the place and thought, well, it's a disaster, but one look at him, and he kind of had this grin on his face, and they thought, well, I guess the boss is telling us the answer. So they went ahead and the track was purchased November the 14th of 1945. Tony Holman bought the Speedway for an undisclosed amount, believed to be $750,000. The Holman family's era continues to this day. Tony Holman's grandson, Tony George, is president of the Speedway. By 1946, the track was ready for racing, and so was the country. The war was over. There was a renewed interest in automobiles, since they were once again being mass-produced. People wanted entertainment. They wanted family outings. In short, they wanted the Indianapolis 500 race back into their lives. Tony Holman wondered if many people would come. But on race day, there was a massive traffic jam. He then knew the race would survive and thrive. 